Humans love to pretend that objects are like people. We give them names, we talk to them, we get attached to them. Like Tom Hanks here in Castaway talking to his friend, a volleyball called Wilson. But when it comes to computers, how do you feel about machines thinking like people? And if machines can think like people, what if one day they begin to think better than us? These are the sorts of questions that people keep asking me. How far away are we from being outsmarted by computers? How far is the development of artificial intelligence? I'm a researcher in artificial intelligence at Cambridge University, and it's been my life's work to address these questions. Artificial intelligence is making the news headlines almost daily. We read about the computer deep mind beating the world grandmaster in the game of Go. Driverless cars are being tested on our streets. Drones are going to be delivering our parcels. Films like Ex Machina and Blade Runner are portraying our future populated with robots that are indistinguishable from us. But what does the future of AI really hold for us? When I was a child, I loved maths. What I really, really was fascinated about was the beauty and the elegance of the solutions that I saw and sometimes even found by myself. And I was also interested in people. So I wondered, how do people come up with such intuitive answers? As I went through my education and work journey, I began to investigate this kind of human thinking and try to make computers do the same. I want computers to find solutions that are intuitive to humans. Let me give you an example of what I mean by intuitive human thinking. Here's a checkerboard. It's called a mutilated checkerboard because two diagonal corners have been removed. Now, a famous problem asks, can you cover this mutilated checkerboard with dominoes? There are many ways that we could try to do that, like this. No. How about like this? Still no. Now, consider this idea. Let's color this board black and white, like a chessboard. And now, it's immediately obvious that we have more black squares than white squares, because when we mutilated the board, we removed two white squares. But we need there to be the same number of black squares and white squares, because a domino covers one black and one white square. So it's obvious we will never be able to cover this mutilated checkerboard with dominoes. This is something so easy and simple for people to see and understand. No symbols, no algebra, no numbers. I'm done. Now, what do you think, how does a computer go about solving this problem? <laughs> this is how. Lots of symbols, lots of algebra, lots of mathematical concepts. It's completely unintelligible, and the intuition behind the human solution is completely lost in it. Computers can't capture this kind of human thinking yet. This is what fascinates me. How do we emulate this kind of human thinking on machines? Now, artificial intelligence has long strived to achieve computer thinking and behavior that is indistinguishable from a human. So why is it that AI is such a hot topic now? 
Well, there are three main advances that are enabling us to make huge progress in AI research, and they are the availability of masses of data that we all generate all the time, the massive computing power that we have access to today, and the new and more sophisticated machine learning algorithms that we haven't considered before. So, in terms of data, every click you make is recorded somewhere. Every video you watch, every item you buy online, everything you say to your friends on social media. And this data is used to learn something, to gain insights about you individually, so that you can get personalized recommendations, such as what kind of film you might like. But more than that, it's also used to learn about groups of people and their behavior. Computing power. Well, you can rent it really cheaply from any one of, for example, Amazon's data centers and gain access to its 80,000 or so computer servers. For comparison, the Watson computer that beat a human in jeopardy in 2011 used 90 servers. So we have instant access to massive computing power. But it's the new and more sophisticated machine learning algorithms that are at the heart of the AI revolution. Unlike in the past, when we built these specialized systems that knew about problems and went about solving these specific problems, the machine learning algorithms of today know nothing about the problems. They only know about learning. They only know about learning. Take, for example, autocorrect on your phone. Previously, your spelling mistake would rarely be picked up, and even then, only if it was misspelled in a particular way. And this was because these were specialized systems that had very specific rules. Today, I can type into my phone in Slovene, and even though my, my phone knows nothing about the Slovene language, it will be able to learn how I spell Slovene words and even how I misspell them. Now, this is interesting because it seems rather counterintuitive, doesn't it? So these machine learning algorithms know nothing about the problem. Instead, they are general in that they can take any data and crunch it and spot patterns. In fact, any problem that can be recast as a statistical algorithm running on huge data sets can now be revisited and tackled again using these new creative approaches. So, for example, the modern dating apps use new machine learning algorithms, and the result is your ideal partner. Did you know, apparently, one in three of us use them? But there are huge challenges in trying to achieve what sometimes is referred to as general AI. Uh, a flexible, adaptable, learning, self-improving system that does all the things that a human does in ways that are indistinguishable from a human. Computer systems today are super fast at dealing with lots of data that far exceeds human capabilities. But they do so in ways that are machine-oriented and most of the time incomprehensible to humans. One of the things that they lack is the ability to think intuitively like humans. Not yet. Now, this brings me back to my love of maths and people. And in my work, I look at how people solve mathematical problems, and then I make computers do the same. In particular, I'm interested in how people solve problems with using intuitive methods, like using diagrams. Here's an example. I'm going to add up all the numbers from one to any number that you give me. Yes, any number. So, any number from zero to 100, let's say, so I, I have a chance even. So, can I hear a number? 53. Okay, I hear 53. So, the sum of all the numbers from one to 53 is 
1,431. How did I do that? Well, I used the theorem, this one. So I didn't really add up all the numbers from 1 to 53. Instead, I multiplied 53 times 54 divided by 2, because I used this theorem. It's much easier and faster that way. So this is the kind of problem that you may remember from your maths classes in school. So, and my children are now learning about it. So let me see, show of hands, how many of you remember this from school? Ah, some, some, not all. Let's see if I can jog your memory and I will show you how I was taught this problem in school. We used a diagram. So my job is to add up all the numbers from, uh, to show that adding up all the numbers from one to any number n equals to n times n plus one divided by two. So I'm gonna represent, because we're talking about numbers, I'm gonna represent them with using counters. And in fact, I'm gonna start showing one side of the equation, n times n plus one. And so I will take a rectangle, in fact, I'm gonna take n to be a particular number, to be a number five. So I'm gonna draw a diagram, a, a rectangle, that is five counters wide and six counters tall, and that's my n times n plus one. Now imagine cutting this rectangle down the diagonal like this. And you can see that what we get is two identical triangles, and each is five counters tall. But my problem halves my rectangle. It says n times n plus one divided by two. So I'm just gonna take one of these triangles. And this now represents one side of my equation. Now my job is to show that that equals to the sum of all increasing numbers. Now imagine cutting this triangle into rows like this. And now you will notice that I get a sequence of increasing numbers. So my triangle shows that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals to 5 times 6 divided by 2, which is 15. But more than that, it also, we can see that my solution is gonna hold for any number, number five or number three that you gave me or 99 or 1001, it will be the same. And we can also see that it's a correct solution. So I wanted to capture this on computers and wanted to make them solve problems in exactly this way, which is, uh, which is exactly what I did. So I built a system where these uh, spatial manipulations are the inferences of the solution. I then used formal methods to justify why a specific, a concrete case like for number five can capture a solution for any number and the system shows then that the, the solution is correct. So I showed that computers can solve problems in similar ways that people solve them. But I also wondered, could they discover new, unseen solutions, things that people have not understood before? So in order to do that, we could use AI methods like machine learning that I mentioned before. I focused on problems in mathematics but the general principles of intuitive thinking can be applied to any area of human endeavor. And this is where I'm gonna be focusing next, making machines discover new knowledge, new intuitive human solutions. So, will AI outsmart humans? Will these intelligent systems pose a threat to humans one day? I see the future in the hands of human experts, but heavily supported and helped with these intelligent systems. Machines are gonna work and collaborate with us in order to help us work more effectively, but also to do things that are beyond our capability alone. Should we be scared? No. 
Should we restrict or slow down the development of artificial intelligence? Definitely not. The positives far outweigh the negatives. In fact, I think it's more risky not to pursue the development of artificial intelligence. We are nowhere near a Terminator-style future, but we are only a decade or so away from the future where intelligence systems help doctors diagnose better, where personalized drugs are used to treat diseases more effectively, where AI systems help drivers drive more safely, surgeons operate more accurately, where these systems enable us, all us people, to converse across multiple languages. This is perhaps the most exciting time in the history of mankind. The rate at which technology is advancing is exponential. And with rapid change, there will always be winners and losers. So that, how, what do we do? How do we become winners in this? Listen. Learn to understand. Embrace the possibilities and make everything that we know today work for us so we can turn our planet into a better place. Thank you. Oh, my God.